Hi, my name is Ryan Langwish, and this is Ludo Lodge, a channel about sparking growth for game designers. And today I'm going to be continuing my series about prototyping in Tabletop Simulator with just a really quick and easy demonstration around labeling components in Tabletop Simulator, which is hopefully something that can just provide a smoother play experience for um, people playing your game, being able to identify what different pieces are and what they might do, um, so that you can focus on the things that you actually are looking um, to get out of a test or a play session. So to start out here, I'm going to bring out just a blue rectangle block here. Um, and suppose this was, you know, some resource or component in my game. And I might in my explanation of the game explain to the players what, what this does. You know, maybe I'm like, you know, this is a resource. These blue blocks can be used to build swimming pools in this particular game. And they might remember that, but it's very possible throughout the game that it's like, what are, the, what are these blue things do again, or what's this? And something that you can do in Tabletop Simulator that you wouldn't be able to do, you know, in a physical play space, is you can actually label components to just make it a little easier um, for playtesters to kind of answer those questions on their own without having to, to bring it up during the session. So, if we right-click this blue block, we'll see way under all these options here, there's a name field and a description field. So it's this name field, if I just type, let's say, blue block, it's a reasonable name. Now, whenever anybody in the play session hovers over that, it's going to say blue block. So that could be enough to answer their question, right? If they're like, what is this resource? And that it might remind them. Um, so that's a really quick and easy thing you can do to just kind of have your different components labeled. If you want to go a step further, you can potentially use the description field as well. So maybe I want them to also remember kind of what you might use this for. Um, and so I'm saying, okay, blue blocks are used for building swimming pools. Um, so now when I hover over it, it's still just going to say blue block. But now if you do a long hover, you'll notice that it says blue block used for building swimming pools. And so I can use this for whatever I want to use it for um, with kind of the main label and then the kind of long hover description. And it can just be a useful way to inject a little bit more um, instruction into the game in a way you wouldn't be able to do in a physical game that can help out your play testers or people playing the game to hopefully just be a little bit smoother experience. Now another thing that might come up during the game is you might have these resources in like a bag or something off to the side where they're going to be taken throughout the game. So let's say we had, if we go to tools here, there's two types of bags here. There's an infinite bag and a normal bag. Let's actually look at the infinite bag first. So with an infinite bag, you can put a component into the infinite bag. And what's nice about it is it actually opens up and shows the component in the top. So if I had a bunch of infinite bags that had different types of components, I'd be able to see in each one what's in each bag. Um, so that's nice in terms of labeling it and being able to find what's there. However, if I do that with a normal bag um, that isn't infinite, rather it's going to have a specific amount of the component in it. So you'll notice when I hover here, it says there's zero. Um, with these, if I take out one of these blue blocks and I stick it in here, there's really no indication as to what's in this bag, right? It tells me there's one element in here, but it doesn't show it on the top, and there's really nothing to tell me what it is. And while infinite bags are very useful, and there may be a lot of instances where that's maybe what you want to use, if you're testing a game that has any limitations on components, which if, if the game has a physical counterpart like it's going to have limitations on physical components, and maybe that matters in the context of the game. Um, then you're going to want to be using a normal bag, and you may still want this to be clearly labeled for people to be able to know what they're going to get here. Um, so the first option you kind of have to help that out is the exact same thing we did um, for the component itself, and that's to come down to this name and description field. So I could, you know, just call this blue blocks, and I could say, you know, used for building swimming pools again. Um, and that basically does the same thing here, where now I can see, oh, that's not just one arbitrary component there, it's one blue block, and it's, those are used for building swimming pools. So I could do that for, you know, if I had a bunch of different bags that had different components, I could label them on that way. Um, 
But that's still not awesome because you can imagine, suppose it's a game that has a lot of different resource types or things. If I had a bunch of bags in a row over here and they were all like that, you wouldn't be able to tell at a glance what any of them are. You'd have to hover over every single one to find what you're looking for. So the best way that I've kind of seen to get around that is to simply label the bag by kind of locking a version of the component outside of the bag. So if this was my blue block bag, and actually I, I should, before I get to that, let me mention one other little thing you could do here, which is you do have the option to change the color tint. So, you know, I could change this to be blue. And if all my different resources are kind of different colors, that could be a good way of labeling, right? If I'm going for the blue resource, I know that the blue bag is what I'm going to want to go to. Um, so that's another quick and easy one. But suppose you really want it clearly labeled. Maybe you have a lot of different bags and resources. Um, what I could do is I could take one of the components that matches what's in the bag and maybe I shrink it down a little bit, so either just by using the minus key or you can come in here and scale down. Um, and so maybe I just make kind of a miniature version of it. And then I'm just going to stick that by the bag and then I'm going to lock it. So if I go to toggles and go to lock, now that just means that nobody can move that or interact with it until it's unlocked. And so it's a simple thing, but you can imagine if I had a lot of bags in a row here with different components, if each one just had like a little miniature version of it in front of the bag, it would be very easy while you're playing the game to know exactly where you're going to grab what you want to grab. Um, and you know, you don't have to worry too much about like it being confused with anything else or, and that's another reason maybe to make it smaller is it doesn't necessarily look like it's just a piece that got stranded on the table somewhere. Um, so yeah, really simple things here like this isn't complicated but they're the kind of things that you know can just provide that extra ease in the in the playing experience um and allow it to go a little bit smoother and when you're testing things in tabletop simulator you're taking on a certain level of of inconvenience with the medium that there's things that are harder to do than in the physical world and maybe your play testers aren't very familiar with tabletop simulator um so i find that you know anything you can do to help kind of combat that so that you can get the most out of your play test um, is worth doing, especially in a case like this where it's so simple. I mean, you can, in a few minutes, update everything in your mod to, to have these kinds of labels or have things shown. Um, so hopefully, hopefully that was kind of helpful. Um, <laughs> and maybe you, you hadn't thought about doing something like that. Um, if you enjoyed the video, uh, consider subscribing. I'm going to definitely put out more um, Tabletop Simulator videos in the future. Um, but thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.